So I'm late on this video. This is going to be my video on the Western magical tradition and the cultivation of vital energy through the use of the Western magical tradition. Uh, the Western magical tradition, as mostly practiced, is sometimes it's called Western yoga because the concept of yoga is to gain union with the Brahman, to unify the Atman with the Brahman. The Atman, of course, is the part of you that is connected to, to the divine and the Brahman is the divine. It is the unknowable divine. Uh, Western magic has the same goals, but Western magic does not use as many physiological or um, meditative or dietary or, you know, methods like that that the Eastern methods use. And it's actually uh, somewhat good. Basically, something had come up with a friend of mine that I had to help, and it made me a little late with this video. But uh, how it works is this. So there's this... Uh, this lovely young lady uh, that's a Talimite, she pronounces it Thalimite. Now, when you actually understand that in, in ancient Greek, the, world, the word Talima is pronounced with a T sound, like the T and the H are both pronounced like T. -t. So Thalima is actually pronounced Talima, Talima. Like uh, Angela from Angela's Symposium said, she goes, it is an ancient Greek word. And the, it is pronounced Talima, but I will pronounce it like the Anglophones do. It does drive you a bit kooky when people say Thalima, when it's actually Talima, Talima, when you know that. But it is, she's a wonderful person. Uh, I love her channel. It's called Dait, or Dait Darling. Uh, her name's Georgina Rose. She actually had published a book. Unfortunately, it's not in print anymore. I wanted to grab it up. It's called True Will. So her channel is all about Talima or she says Thalima, uh, and it's about uh, exploring the true. Th Thalima is the, the religion of the will. Do as thou wilt is the whole of the law, um, which she gets into that. If you want to know more about Thalima, I'll do more videos about it too because I'm a former Thalemite, but she can get you Go to her channel. I'm going to leave a link to her channel. It's a wonderful channel amongst other channels that I follow on Thalima, but it's a wonderful channel. Definitely check it out if you're interested in that. But what she pointed out in one of her videos is that some Talimites use a lot of Eastern magic, Eastern mysticism in their practice. And as she, she uses mostly Western or all Western practices, Western magical tradition in her practice. Uh, Talima is kind of like the, the joining uh, Ordo Temple Orientis, Order of the Templars of the Orient, the OTO. Uh, Ordo Temple Orientis and the whole concept of Talima in general is kind of a unification of the East and the West, uh, as can be seen on Crowley's lectures on yoga. Um, and so with the Western magical tradition, there are specific exercises such as the invocation of the bornless one, uh, the middle pillar ritual. These are all concepts of inviting the divine into you. Now, what is the divine? The divine is vital energy. In the Kabbalistic tradition, it's called uh, Rush or Rosh. Okay, so it's uh, and also in uh, in the Egyptian tradition, you could call it the Ka, or in the uh, in some of the other traditions, that, like the the uh, in Huna, it's called Mana. Okay, and I'm gonna get I'm gonna get into this also with shamanic traditions and things of that nature. Shamanic traditions in Qigong, or Qui or or uh, Qigong or Qigong or however you want to say it, they're actually kind of similar because both Qigong and the shamanic traditions come from the Mongolian traditions. Okay, they're Mongoloid. So the Mongolian traditions are virtually, the, what's so neat about the Mongolian traditions is they are kind of the same, regardless of whether it's done in Mongolia, Siberia, all the way to Chile. The, the Mongoloid people, the Mongolian type people, really have an unbroken uh, secession of these traditions, these shamanic traditions. But that's not what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about the Western magical traditions in the cultivation of uh, of vital energy or ki as we call it in Korean in the Korean martial arts we call it ki. I do not prefer the Western traditions. 
I am one of the people that prefers the Eastern methods, but I don't necessarily prefer the Eastern methods. What's also humorous is Georgina Rose, the young lady with the channel of the Talimic, the Talimic channel. Um, what I liked about her is it's amazing when you see with a magician's eyes, when you practice magic, it takes you to other areas. Like for example, when I had first started practicing Talima, uh, and then I left Talima and became a, like I became a Satanist like my father was, and then I left Satanism and became a scientific pantheist. And I'm still a scientific pantheist. But once you have practiced the, the practice of Talima, to practice your true will, you see everything differently. You see everything afresh. Like when I started reading uh, the works of Ellen G. White, and when I started looking at Seventh-day Adventism, and I started looking from Seventh-day Adventism into biologic living and naturopathy and these things, uh, it's interesting because Talima is what brought me to the Eastern methods of, of, chi, of you know, vital energy cultivation through Crowley's works, through his works on yoga and his concept that Buddha was the best example we had to gain conversation with our holy guardian angel, which is the part of us which is part of the divine. And what is the divine? To me, as a scientific pantheist, the divine is nature in its rawest sense. It's unknowable most, well, not really its rawest sense, but its most uh, refined sense that we cannot really fathom as humans, but we can fathom through the holy guardian angel. Uh, so that was what brought me to studying. It wasn't martial arts. A lot of people will think, well, you practice martial arts, and that's what brought you to the Eastern methods of vital energy cultivation. No, it was actually Talima. It was actually Crowley. Okay, Crowley or Crowley, as people say. See, people get mad when I mispronounce. When uh, I get I get irked when people mispronounce Talima, and then some people get mis uh, irked when I mispronounce Crowley because I pronounce it as Crowley. Okay, so the thing is, uh, what you have to keep in mind is the Western magical tradition. Uh, in the early in the early twentieth century, in the late nineteenth century, through things like theosophy and things like Talima, was sort of a unifying point for the East and the West, for the Eastern traditions and the Western traditions. It just so happens that the Eastern traditions are more direct, I feel, than the Western traditions. Okay, with the cultivation of vital energy. Okay. So there are all sorts of things about this. Aleister Crowley talks about um, strengthening the body of light, which would be like the, in, in the Eastern tradition, it's very literally uh, the secondary, it's the meridian system, okay? So that's uh, talked about, but it's also talked about in the Western magical traditions. Uh, it's also uh, interesting how this works, but a lot of the traditions, and I'm going to leave a link to the invocation of the bornless one and an invocation, the middle pillar. Okay, there's three, three big rituals that are used for cultivation of vital energy in the Western magical tradition. And they are the invocation of the bornless one. The bornless one is God. Okay. The second one is the... Uh, middle pillar ritual, which is uh, basically aligning the, sh the, the chakras or kankras, if you're speaking Sanskrit, which is which are like you know the the third eye, the crown, the you know the, the you know the different energy centers of the body, uniting them with the different spots on the tree of uh, the tree of life, the kabbalistic tree of life, the the central column of the tree of life. And then there is um, the, uh, the circulation of the body of light, which is similar, but it, uh, it circulates the divine energy throughout the body, the, or the spiritual energy, the pneuma, the bios, whatever you want to call it, vital energy is vital energy. Um, I tend to equate things, because I'm a staunch materialist, I tend to equate it with nerve force and things of that nature. But... Uh, yeah, th so they're the three main rituals that are used to cultivate vital energy. 
Now, if you read Crowley's books on yoga and his book Magic Liber ABA, the whole book, the gigantic monster of a book, his magnum opus, he also brings up the use of pranayama. Uh, pranayama is the breathing technique where you, uh, you know, you breathe in and out of each alternating nostril. Now, what Crowley does which a lot of people do not do is he emphasizes the need to use great force to breathe with. A lot of people have calmed down the breathing practices of the pranayama to the point where it's slow. Now, this probably has to do with different gurus teaching different manners of pranayama. But you have to remember at Crowley's time, yoga was fresh in the West. And Crowley actually went to India and other places to study these things. He didn't just uh, read them from a book or something like that as we would today. So my point is, is that I do want people to check out Dice Darling's uh, channel, but also check out the links in the description. I'm leaving many links in the description to much of this. And as I said, I will have an upcoming video on the use of shamanic practices, particularly Siberian and native um, Amerindian practices of cultivation of vital energy. And that's all for this video.